Today I'm at the Steve Singh Fisherman's Wharf. I'm so excited to be here today where it's spot prawn season here in Vancouver, Canada. And I can't wait to see how big they become. Let's go have a look. Spot prawns are a summer delicacy in Vancouver, Canada. So today with the spot prawns, I'll be making a seared tail appetizer, a poached tail salad, a soup utilizing the forgotten parts of the prawn, and of course, sashimi. First, since some of these guys are still having a party, I'll let them rest in the fridge till they're about 0 to 1 degrees Celsius. For sashimi, these guys taste a whole lot better after resting it for a day. I'll stick my thumb into the back of the head and twist to get the most meat out of the prawn. Now we will proceed to deshell these guys, but if you leave the tail in the last segment of the shell, you now officially get what you would have in a restaurant. So guys, check out this one I found. It's a sprout prawn at its most natural state, and this is what you'll probably find if you ate it live. It's almost transparent, you can see the palm of my hand. Lightly slice open the back of the prawn to reveal the veins that taste like sand when it enters your mouth. With delicate gesture, you can devein the prawn to reveal the sashimi that you can now consume. Before we start making the hot dishes, let's make the salad. I'll take sesame oil, ponzu, and sugar at a 1 to 3 to 0.75 ratio to create the salad dressing. Mix it all together and you got yourself the easiest dressing of all time. In some lightly salted boiling water, lower your prawns in a direction that the boiling water will not angrily splash back at you. After it comes to a boil, stop the heat and let it rest in the water for about 2 minutes. Boil it too long and it may become too hard. Because the heat has progressed through the prawn, it will be much easier to peel than the ones for sashimi. Now these guys are ready to put on a bed of fresh greens. Next, we'll make some deep fried prawn heads. If your shrimps are live, the heads will turn black and bitter if it sits out too long. So we'll trim off the whiskers, the sharp part of the horn, and the eyes to only consume what's edible. Then slightly pry open the legs from the head to expose the delicious miso. I'll dip this in some potato starch, making sure to coat the miso and to shake off any excess potato starch. I'll deep fry it at 330 degrees Fahrenheit and watch the four stages of deep frying for the golden prawn head. Shh. Lightly season it with some salt and pepper, resisting the urge to eat it right away because you do not want to eat pain for dinner. Next for the soup, I'll transfer the prawn heads to a pot big enough so you can fill it with just enough water to cover the prawns, and a little bit more water to consider how much water will be lost while it's cooking. The same will be done for the sauce as well. We'll be pairing this with the prawn tail appetizer, so add some water and a little extra. After bringing it to a boil and lowering it to a simmer, some scum will form on the top so it must be taken care of. I'll slice some ginger, ends off, skin on, and against the grain for more flavor. Cut an onion in a way that you would imagine your favorite onion ring size to be and we'll add this to what is the potential of what makes this appetizer so delicious. Now that we got that out of the way, we'll forget about it for the next 45 minutes. In the meantime, we'll prepare the rest of the ingredients. Here are some vegetables that will be added to the soup. I'll roughly dice the cabbage in big chunks that will add sweetness to the soup. Roll the tomato over on the cutting board with your tiny knife to ever so gently take out the solid core, leaving us with just the soft parts for easy slicage. Here's how you can easily dice your tomatoes. Thank you. 
This is a baby carrot. These are usually sweeter than your average bigger carrots. With the ends gone, cut them accordingly to a size that you think would fit in your mouth. After remembering about the soup you left on the stovetop and not actually knowing if 45 minutes had actually passed or not, let's strain out the shells. And before we work on the sauce, I'll add the rest of the vegetables to the soup. I'll eyeball a touch of mirin, light soy, and more of the salt to draw out the essence of the prawn. Now we can strain out the sauce as well, but this time, requiring that I try to get every shell into the strainer so we can use the ladle to lightly push, which looked like it would have worked, or use this wooden stick, which comes in a pair with a Japanese mortar and pestle, to crush the prawn heads for the miso. Let's finish up the sauce by adding mirin and soy sauce at a 1 to 0.75 to 0.5 ratio and some salt to adjust the taste accordingly. Some potato starch slurry, which is just potato starch and just enough water for it to become a liquid state, to which I'll add to the sauce that was just boiling, stirring while pouring the mixture until it is thick enough to draw light streaks to the bottom of the pan and bring it back to a boil to give it that nice, glossy finish. I also thought of adding some yuzukosho butter to the prawn tail appetizer, so we'll add some butter to a warm pan and melt it. Then forget you were melting butter because you were too busy feeding your cat. Add a tiny dose of yuzukosho to the butter and this will probably work out better if the butter was not as hot as this. But this method works as well. Finally taking the spot prawns I've cut open with some scissors, I'll lightly coat it in some all-purpose flour to quickly obtain the golden brown goodness. Then just a few seconds on the other side to get a little color. Now brush it gently with the yuzu kosho butter that will melt in your mouth. And using a tool that will not fall in your pan, splash some prawn miso somewhere on the plate that will look nice. Now we can witness the fruits of your labor. That was so delicious. Using the scalp run, I've showcased the appetizer, soup, salad, and sashimi. They were all delicious in their own right, but I think my favorite had to be the seared spot prawn with the yuzu kosho butter and the prawn head miso sauce. The slight squeeze of lemon really completed the dish and really brought out the natural flavors that the sprout prawn has to offer. Spot brown is my favorite food, so I'm glad I could share some of my recipes with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment down below which ingredient you guys would like to see next broken down. Till next time. See ya.